Hello everyone, thank you for joining me today discussing what every child needs. And as I say every child, it's really what every person needs. I want to copy Abraham Maslow. He is a theorist who helped us understand a lot about human nature and about needs that everyone has. And I like this because as you work with the child, he provides simplicity on is this working? If not, maybe we could try this. And so let me quickly explain. This is a triangle shape. I want you to picture a pyramid and you want to work your way. Your goal is to be up here. This is what an authentic person's life will look like. We don't always get to stay at the tippy top. It's like a ladder, if you will. But uh, that's our goal because that's being our true selves, who we are created to be. The base of it is what we all have to have. It's like on a ladder. You've got to take that first step before you can be up here. You can't just jump up here to the top, right? And this bottom one is are your physiological needs. And those come to mind to you pretty quickly, I'm sure. You need shelter. You need food. You need clothing. You need love. Love is a, is a human need that we have, and that is being loved for who we are and no matter what. And that is a very sad thing when a person doesn't have it, but the best thing you give to your child is like, no matter what you do, I want to love you. That doesn't mean you accept all the behaviors, but that does mean that that child is whole and okay, just as he or she is. And that is at the very bottom, your physiological needs. Up the next row is going to be what's called our social need, our safety needs, excuse me, safety needs. That's feeling safe and secure. If you will notice, it's above the physiological needs. So we only feel safe if our physiological needs are met. And safety needs, for young children, it comes from consistency. So whatever discipline action you do, being consistent is actually the most important thing. But the best discipline is positive discipline, which is catching the child doing what he or she is doing correctly and pointing that out. Oh, I like the way you're doing this or you're doing this. Or actually teaching the child, uh, teaches them security because they know what to do instead of just what not to do and the other thing that comes with safety needs or our rules typically if you have a three-year-old no more than three rules keep them very simple keep them very positive instead of do not run how about walking feet you have to think in positives before you think of negative so if I say don't think of an elephant you absolutely think of an elephant before you can't think of an elephant or don't not think of an elephant so you want to stay in positive walking feet hands feet things to ourselves things like that keeping it very simple but very consistent that actually helps the safe the child feel safe also if you're in a classroom setting and you follow the same routine every day that is wonderful the best adage for a young child is the best surprise is no surprise now we want everybody to be a social being that comes up here kids will not be social they will not get along with other people if they don't feel safe and if their physiological needs are met that's what i love about this so the first thing you ask is okay this child's acting out when was the last time he ate is he are his physiological needs met okay am i being consistent so you want to look at what you could do to make it better for the child now typically children are not going to feel the the socialness until like three and a half so don't expect him to share ever if you're working with toddlers everybody gets their glue if you have one bottle of glue you get different lids and you each kid will get a little bit of glue if you are doing a center and you everybody will have a truck if you have six kids in that area to play with the blocks and there's trucks everybody gets a truck same thing enough babies for everybody don't expect them to share that is, it's a developmental thing. It's not a selfish thing. It's just where that child is at. So know that. And just keep in mind, you get a brand new BMW, you don't want to just give your keys over to your neighbor to share. There's some things we don't want to share that needs to be respected with young kids. But they're going to get along. Some kids are just more natural at it, more social than others. That's fine. And some kids have to be taught how to be social, just like you teach them the ABCs, you teach them colors, you teach them shapes. They have to learn how to get along. That's fine too. But just know in general, they will get along best and only according to Maslow's hierarchy of needs if the safety needs are met as well as the physiological and then up here as you see we're getting narrow because so many so few people get here and it's just such a tragedy in our society and this is good self-esteem this is liking you who you are accepting your imperfections and not wanting to be anybody else this will not happen until these three things are met 
And that's why I focus more on these bottom ones because they're so essential. Up here is called self-actualization. This is where true spiritualization and true creativity takes place. You may go to church and you may tithe every Sunday, but that means nothing if you don't have the personal relationship. We all have a born need to believe in something beyond ourselves, and you can't get that unless all these things are here. So it really does help to feed them bread before you feed them the spiritual, whatever your belief is. Then true creativity, finding a new way to do something for yourself or with a tight schedule and finding a way to balance everything. That's creativity. Yes, it's art. and Yes, it's in music. There's lots of other obvious ways creativity. True creativity is not going to happen unless physiological needs are met, the child feels safe, social needs are met, self-esteem is there and in place, and then this happens. Very few people make this. If you ever experience it at all in your life, consider yourself fortunate. But that is our goal. And I said this is important for young children, but we as educators need to work for this too because we cannot possibly possess, teach what we do not have. If you don't have good self-esteem, you cannot teach that or model that or enhance that in a young child. So work on yourself because you're worth it and our young children are worth it. And I hope this Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs was beneficial to you. And thank you for being a part of this virtual college. Awesome. Have a great day.